So it's a great honor and privilege to welcome a friend and distinguished young scholar to be with us tonight to speak on the topic of why manuscripts matter and how HMML is revolutionizing scholarship. Professor Jack Tenous. Jack is a graduate of the University of Texas at Austin with a 4.0 GPA and four majors. You're getting the picture. Philosophy, Arabic, Middle Eastern studies, and history. He received a Marshall Scholarship to attend Oxford University, so we share that as well. And he received an MPhil degree in Eastern Christian Studies in 2004. And there he was able to study Syriac with the same man who taught me Syriac, Professor Sebastian Brock of Oxford. I hope I can live up to that. <laughs> thank you, Columba. That was amazing. So I want to thank Columba for inviting me to speak tonight at this Millennium Club and Legacy Celebration. I know it's a, leg it's a cliche to say that it's a true honor to be here, but really, it's a true honor to be here. Um, the people who are here tonight are part of one of the most exciting and worthwhile enterprises I'm aware of in the entire field of the humanities and also one of the most cutting edge endeavors. I just got an email uh, today from a Japanese colleague, a friend in Tokyo. He was in uh, Kyrgyzstan, and he, while there, took some photos. And here is a, uh, from the National Museum in Kyrgy uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, a, a cross with Syriac on it. And he told me that there are tons and tons of Christian sites that need to be excavated, and there's no money for it, monasteries, medieval monasteries. Uh, it's a, a country that people think of as being former communist or Muslim or Muslim and communist or some, some combination of those two. But there was once a strong Christian presence there, and it was because of Syriac missionary work. While, so the British Library collection, this great infusion of manuscripts comes into London, this is a stimulus for Syriac scholarship throughout Europe. Um, the high point of this, this, this renaissance um, is this man named William Wright. William Wright was a great Semitist. All these figures are figures of towering importance. So William Wright wrote, which is to this day, this, still the best grammar of Arabic in any European language. Um, he wrote a history of Syriac literature. There's a story about him. I think when they're doing a revision of the Bible, I can't remember which one it was, he was in charge of revising the Minor Prophets. He was in charge of, of the new translation of the Minor Prophets. And um, there was a dinner party once held at his, he was a chair of Arabic at Cambridge, and uh, he had a parrot. And uh, people were at the dinner party, and uh, the parrot was in the room, and the parrot started saying over and over again, damn the minor prophets, damn the minor prophets. <laughs> and he, he had the parrot taken out very quickly, uh, and he's very embarrassed. So in addition to being a great Semitist and, and, and knowing Arabic, and he knew Ethiopic very well, um, he also wrote a three-volume catalog um, of, the, of the manuscript collection in the British Library, and the British Museum at the time. Um, after the Bibliotheca Orientalis of Asamani, it's probably the greatest monument of Syriac scholarship ever produced. It's a wonderful, amazing, phenomenal work. Uh, it sounds really nerdy, but you can read it for pleasure. And so Wright's catalog of this collection is a major, in this collection itself, a major stimulus to research. This is, a, this is a golden era of Syriac studies. At the same time, Europeans are going to the East. They're buying manuscripts. They, they start making uh, Oxford. Cambridge, Paris, Berlin, these great collections which already existed are growing and getting bigger. And this is sort of the golden era. So what HMML has done is it's the third great infusion of Middle Eastern manuscripts onto the radar screen of Western academics. He has made things, Columba, what Columba has done and what, what Himmel have done is they've made things that were once upon a time the most difficult to access, the easiest to access. It used to be if you read, read something in verbis, you'd think, okay, well, I know it's out there, but I can't go see it. You might fly to Turkey. You might take you know, a car out to some remote monastery and then find out that the guy who's got the key to get in, he's in Australia right now visiting his brother. What do you do? They might not let you in. They might think you're somebody coming to, st so many things were stolen, people are very suspicious of Western scholars now. So now, rather than look at verbis longingly, you can go to HMML. They are cheaper, faster, friendlier and more efficient than any European library. I won't name names, but you can, certain libraries in Europe, if you request a manuscript in August, you might not ever get a response. I've done that before. I had to re you know, in France. Or whatever. 
you, you, you get, everybody's on vacation. You don't get a response. Certain libraries in Europe, you can pay three or four pounds per page, and thousands of dollars for one manuscript re reproduction. Columba, he once told me I was a grad student ordering. He said, we're not trying to make money. We're doing this for cost, and they'll give you a, a discount if you're a grad student.